The new front is wider, you can see it at the double kidney, just visual, but it's indeed four centimeters wider in the track in the front, two centimeters more track in the rear, so that also gives a bigger stance on the road. This one here is Portimao Blue, to my pleasure, and we're also here in Portimao today, so very fitting combination. Those headlamps have a small kink in here, and they come standard with LED, optional adaptive LED, and the third step is then this one here, the LED laser light, 600 meters of high beam range on markets where it's allowed with this maximum high beam range. Then you can see there are some blue accentuations there. And the daytime running light changes a little bit depending on which spec of headlamps you have gone for. We also have shots here at night from those headlamps. Then you can really see how the LED daytime signature is here with those uh, top spec lights. Looks really impressive for sure. And this is also the M Sport line. That means a sportier spoiler. Also with some comp structures here in the very front. There are some different sport lines. There is, um, you know, start with the base spec. There's the luxury spec. Then there's also um, sport line, which takes it a little bit further than here, the M Sport. And then above that, the M340i, which is even a little bit sportier. And this also changes the front kidney here. This is the chrome. You could also get a black pack where you then have a dark shiny kidney frame. Then you can also get a matte gray. And finally with the 340i, the M340i, there is this copper tone. We've shown you also some pictures from the Motor Show, LA Motor Show, where we've already seen the 340i as it's really looking in a real color. You can also see this copper tone at the front kidney. And technology-wise, you can also close the kidney as it is here at the moment to reduce the wind resistance and it opens when it needs more air. It is not a new technology feature, but introduced here now in the 3 Series. Here those integrated nozzles for the wiper, so you don't waste so much fluid while driving especially. So it comes out here and wipes then clean instead of just being sprayed all over the place. I think it's definitely a good addition. 4 meters 70, 15 foot 4 or 185 inches is the length of this new generation. It's about 8.5 centimeters longer than the predecessor. This one here is the M Sport one with the M badge. You can see it right there. Rims 16, 17, 18, 19. The optional one here with the M design, two color scheme. Pretty sporty for sure. Of course, if you want more riding comfort, then you would rather pick a smaller rim size to have more tire for dampening left. Suspension wise, you get either a base suspension with new hydraulic cushions. So there's basically a progressive damping rate then. You cannot change it, it's a fixed one but the more it goes in, the harder it gets. And so it shall offer more comfort and sportiness at the same time. This one here today is basically this fixed suspension, but with a lower M setup, 10 millimeters lower. That's the second choice you can go to. And an adaptive suspension, we will test later on the racetrack with the M340i. So those three suspension types you have available. You can see the overall shape is not revolutionary, rather evolutionary because this is their core model. They don't want to change it too much 
Um, so they always have to stick to their traditions a little bit. This one here with black window frames. You can also get chrome window flame frames if you prefer that. And then if you think about Wilhelm Hofmeister, who introduced the so-called Hofmeister Knick in 61, 1961 with the BMW 3200 CS. By the way, yeah, it's, it's a kink, but the original German word is Knick. So it's the Hofmeister Knick because Knick means kink in German. That's just a translation. And the interesting thing is that here now, it is basically the door and the chassis. Before that, it was just the door. And now they moved also this part here into the chassis. This is classic also for the BMW style. And we'll also find those ones in the interior, those styling elements. Look out for that. And the slight shoulder here, not too strong. This one will be different with the coupe versions, for example. And there will also be a touring version later on. Well, it looks evolutionary on the exterior but there's so much to tell you more about this car they have worked on the weight balance 50 percent in the front 50 percent in the front 50 percent in the rear so it's really even balance 55 kilograms less of weight if you compare it to the predecessor so 25 percent stiffer from the chassis so a lot of technology features you cannot really see from the exterior we are eager to find out how that one plays out for driving in the rear you have those new tail lamps which are really three-dimensional you can see that here i can really grab them and they are horizontally drawn and they look really great in this l form especially at night other than that the rear looks pretty clean it's a classic bmw rear for sure that's a rear view camera right there if you want one and this lower bumper is in a black style if you go for the m sport there are also different styling variants then and this is here a real exhaust so that's still the real deal and Considering this one here is the four cylinder, you already heard initially some sound bites. I think it also has a pretty decent exhaust sound. What do you think? So, what's under the hood? Today, for our main test vehicle, the 330i, this is a two liter four cylinder with 258 horsepower, 5.8 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour acceleration. There's the 320i available with 184 horsepower, but same base engine. Then there will be a 330e plug-in hybrid with a 60 kilometers electric range and then later on there's the m340i we've seen it at the motor show and we can already drive one of those today a three liter six cylinder with 374 horsepower and 4.4 seconds acceleration figure and then of course there are still the diesels either two liter four cylinder diesel 150 or 190 horsepower or the three liter six cylinder diesel with 265 horsepower. And what else is interesting? Well, this one here comes with rear wheel drive. You can also get an all wheel drive for diesel. And important information now, especially for our friends in the US, the M340i will be always all wheel drive in Europe, but in the US, you can also get it as a standard rear wheel drive, but also as an all wheel drive. So I already welcome you here to the pit lane. We'll get back here for driving very soon. But here I want to show you, well, it's a weird combination, the 320D combined with the performance parts, but it's not about the engine, it's about the performance parts here. You can see in the lower part, there's some carbon fiber wing. Well, if you damage those, you cannot repair them. You have to replace them. It's really expensive for sure, but this is just for the visual part. And here also not available from stock, but then from the performance part, 20 inch rims in this spider spoke design. Pretty impressive for sure, but of course reduce the comfort. Then some M Performance batching at the rear, towards the rear, at the side part here, an additional black side skirt you can see, and carbon fiber side mirror caps. That's also belonging to that. And towards the rear, there is also available another carbon fiber lip right here at the top part as well as carbon fiber parts in the lower end as well. So here the slip and the lower part, carbon fiber around the exhaust, special performance exhaust and for even more sound and also this rear diffuser from carbon fiber too. And in the interior, cannot open that at the moment, but I can already tell you, maybe we can take a look through the window a little bit. I'm not sure how much you can see, but that steering wheel is also with Alcantara at the sides, left and right.
This is the car key, slim, the M Sport and M Performance models get also the M colors here at the side. And you can also get this full digital key with the display if you like, but this one here is of course slimmer and lighter. And interesting, it will have a motion sensor, all keys, so when you just hold it still, just when it's somewhere, you know, lying somewhere, it deactivates the radio frequency that it cannot be copied and stolen. That's, you know, typical stuff that is being done by thieves today that they copy the radio frequencies of those and then can open the vehicle so when it's moving then it's activated that also the keyless entry function is activated when you put your finger here on this top part it opens as uh, it closes sorry and when you put it inside when you put it inside <laughs> there it is then it opens again so door oh door closing sound sorry hmm, I think that's okay but we've heard it also more solid so let's say neutral so top part is a little bit soft not entirely hard then there's a um, leather red cover with blue contour stitches very nice on the inside then the Hofmeister kink or knick in German then is also here at the inside of the doors very interesting design detail ambient light is right there and it's also flashing red when the door is open we have some night shots there where we can show you how it's in red flashing when the door is open as warning signal for yourself and for others behind you and some ambient light shots also later very soon here it does also fit for bigger balls so it's an intelligent build for sure for the racetrack this one here is a little bit hard i can already tell you um, but you know for normal use it's there because it shouldn't um, gather so many scratches then the main interior for you of course all new this is where it has changed more on the interior here now compared to the predecessor those seats here are the optional sports seats they have more support at the side and at the shoulders especially the base seats are also available and offer probably more comfort we will soon test them hopefully and the base starts at least in Europe also with fabric and in the US you probably will get also sensor tech and those sports seats here they also come standard in the M340i and then with the Alcantara fabric mix I would recommend you those to go for. This one is the optional animal skin spec and this advantage in comfort is also that the seating area is quite stiff and so it doesn't adapt so much to your seating. Electric controls right there, forward and backward. This one is here for the lumbar support and for the back part of the seat. This one here also for the side shoulder bolts as you can adjust it a little bit this is the m steering wheel you can also get the base steering wheel you can see this somehow asynchronous form especially very thick in the upper part area where you grab the steering wheel in the upper part digital instruments we can already see right here it will also start with analog instruments then with a 5.7 inch screen this one is a 12.3 inch screen on the left side we'll soon tell you more about the other screens let me first get inside this vehicle so it's a mid-size sedan so it also sits typically quite low as we have the m sport suspension here it also sits 10 millimeters even lower but still you get overall a quite positive feeling and they also made the a pillar here a little bit slimmer that offers you a better overview to the side part and i mean when you just sit here it doesn't feel like a total revolution you feel at home you feel ah, oh, you know that's a three theories still of course this digitalization of the cockpit we are so going into um, dig deeper into that that is the biggest change right here but other than that it is still a very classic and conservative conservative building style for sure again with the electric seats here when i put it all the way low still have a lot of headroom left one meters 86 or six foot one so for tall people no problem there's also optional a panoramic roof array available. We've seen that in our studio episode as well. So you can, if you're interested in the panoramic roof, you can go to our studio episode and check that one as well. We also have some different uh, trims in that one. Let's continue here with this vehicle here with the whole perspective. This is the interior overview. It definitely looks more modern and cleaner than the previous generation. Top part of the dashboard is also 
from soft touch so one of your questions was the build quality yes it has been improved massively so far in the previous generations they were behind the competition as for build quality in the interior now they stepped up the game also very well integrated with that screen it starts 8.8 .8 inch this one is the top one 10.25 inch you can connect your phone with apple carplay wirelessly exclusive no Android Auto yet. I've asked them. They are working on the integration there, but they don't offer it yet. But it will soon come for sure. They say also they will offer over-the-air updates, by the way. Then let's take a broader perspective first. Here again with the Chrome frame, you get different decor elements. I think it looks a little bit cheap here. It's just a foil. Um, you know, I think that could have done a little bit better there. Um, but very well integrated with this very slim ambient light. If you take a night perspective, that looks super amazing with the ambient light. Very well integrated, also with different color choices, of course. The blue one is the most fitting one here. The climate unit is still separated here. Um, with the screen also shows you the temperature then. There's nothing to turn or so, but I think it's still good when you're just driving, then you just change it like that. You can also use the voice activation for that, um, either at the steering wheel or say, hey BMW, set temperature to 22 degrees. I set the temperature in the driver's area on 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, but that said 21 still. So she said that he changed it, but it didn't change here. Hmm. Well, the thing is with this voice activation, we had it in the studio in a, let's say it worked better because the problem here with those voice activation is the same on also with Mercedes. It depends on the internet connection. So you cannot always say this one is good and this one is bad. It's had also a lot of functions, but here there's not so much signal. And when you have less signal, the voice activation will also work you know less good that's first please drive me to lisbon you see it takes a while here usually it's all goes right. a little bit our next destination is lisbon yeah there it goes so but you've seen um i tested it before in different surrounding and then it just was faster because the web connection was better so the system does help you primarily to pick the routes for me that one is definitely better and well temperature if you want to keep your hands on the steam but i think it's just easier to do it like this then let's take a look at the map here i think it's a very crystal clear display still and it's also really responsive so um, these maps are also on there so i can see that it doesn't have to be loaded to uh, from the web all, all over the place so great responsiveness there and of course always important to show you the camera system i start the engine for that i can show you the camera system with an interesting rear view camera for example or also together with this drone view from above and also that is very cool when i turn the steering wheel the camera itself tilts a little bit or pans with it that is really really cool and also equipped with the front view camera and it also goes with your view so that's very well done you can also connect your phone via bluetooth by the way that's still possible and yes it's a touch screen um, you can have this touch screen whoa interesting music not mine so like this but you also can still use this lower controller so both is possible oh there was a blue car here as well sitting here when you we have a blue car we also have a blue car in the information display nice one of my favorite details is metal knurling around the classic volume knob. Those are hotkeys and sorry, there's no CD player left. I was mistaken there in our static studio review. So there's no CD player here. Then this top part opens. There's an inductive charging platform for your smartphone and a classic USB supply next to a 12 volt power supply and adaptive cup holders. Then this new shifting lever right there and you can control the driving modes. We'll talk about that when we drive the car. And this classic turn and pressing knob to control the infotainment system if you don't want to do it by touch or when you want to write something like an address. 
then you can add it on that pad here. But addresses really now work very well with the voice integration. I always used it now with the newer cars for sure. Electric handbrake, then this top part. We also tested with German cars, of course, and here it's very well attached. Although it has, you know, quite some length here, this middle armrest, but that also leaves you a lot of room here on the interior. And in the rear here, there is a USB-C port. So here you can see all digital is all black when it's turned off. So far they had a mix between analog and digital, so to say, also some metal elements in there. I found that quite nice, by the way. There's a sensor above that, by the way, to uh, watch if you're already getting fatigue. So it's a camera watching the driver. Hmm. Then let's turn on the ignition. And here we are. And speed on the left side, RPM on the right side. And yes, it's going counterclockwise. The reason for that is they save room when it goes like this. And then you can put more information on the middle part. Yes, you can definitely argue for that. It makes sense somehow. That's the counterclockwise RPM meter. Hmm, I'm not sure. What, what do you think? There's a digital speed here too. And if you have a root set like this, you also see the GPS information in the middle of your screen. And then on the right side, your favorite or unfavorite music choice, <laughs> the gears, um, consumption, whatever you want, or a G meter. So look at the head-up display where the engine is running. You can see the speed, the allowed speed, and also some map information. For example, this arrow here so far when you're starting, and then also a little bit more um, precise GPS information as soon as the next intersection is appearing. Let's get in the rear. Now it gets really exciting because there is an increase in wheelbase for this new generation, and ah, that's better. So you might remember the review of the previous generation that didn't work out so f so well for the rear legroom now it does mm, with my feet the front driver seat should be a little bit higher than would be easier to put my feet under the seat you can see those gaps at this uh, back part of the seat so it does work with my knees so four tall adults can easily drive near also headroom wise although it's a sedan that still works up to like heights of four times 190 meters, six foot two, six foot three, that would still work. Then, about practicability, because that was also one of your questions. You have those nets at the side of the seats. Then, also in the rear, you have those cup holders, or let's say bottle holders. Harman Kardon sound system, by the way, optional. You have different sound system setups. Um, so, there are three setups basically with different amounts of speakers. This one is the top one. Um, overall is 6, 10 or 16 speakers at maximum. <laughs> oh, also the Hofmeister King or Knick, depending on if you get German or English, is also at the inside of the doors here at the rear driver side. Also interesting design detail for sure. There are still handles here on all four sides. This is, I mean, quite often they save that nowadays, but you know, if this is a fast driver here in the 3 Series, that might be a good idea. Then there's an armrest with cup holders for the kids. You can also use this ski hatch already, already right here. But the other part here, there's nothing you could actually do from flipping or something that has all been done via the trunk. Isofix at the outer seats and this whole rear bench setup it's so typical 3 Series. If I just remember the E30 of my grandparents, this almost looked the same, like from a basic style. Also with a big middle tunnel here, always a rear-wheel driven car. So sitting in the middle seat here, you know, it's really just for emergency situation. It's, it w works basically, but you have to put your feet at the sides each. And then also the middle part is stiffer, but you can see room-wise it still does work. So you can also fit the three adults here at the rear. Still somewhat okay. And what about the features here? You can optionally get a three-zone AC. There's a control unit lower here. Also with seat heating for the rear seats. Well, it also works at the moment. Although, ah, oh, there it is. That's good. So it's being activated, although 
the engine is shut off and two USB-C ports. Yeah, you know, the kids already have the USB-C um, stuff for sure. Whereas the parents maybe have the older smartphones, you know, the kids always get the best. <laughs> so they are, they are more up to date with USB-C and 12 volt power supply. So you can charge enough devices here for sure. So open the trunk with your hand, with the key or with the foot kick opening mechanism, if you pick that option, of course, as all premium manufacturers, they want to have your money for all the options here they, they offer. So pay attention that you try to stick to the base price just a little bit, otherwise it gets really expensive. Well, classic sedan opening, there will be the touring version later, we'll keep you updated with that on Autogefuel. 480 liters is a setup, they gained massively in the room, you can see that, this is a more square dimension. This is really a big improvement if you compare it to the predecessor. Um, well, the reason is, cannot lift anything up here, you know? So they put the whole trunk here lower, but there's nothing I can lift up. Then, recently I had a comment, one of you was saying like, as long as a German car journalist still measures the trunk space with a measuring stick or with a ruler, the world is in place. <laughs> it was very funny. <laughs> so, the length here is just about a meter. And the width between the wheel arch is a little bit less than a meter. So um, that will be better in the touring. Yeah, yeah, almost a meter. Yeah, that's it. And the height right here, that's some 50 centimeters. So that's very well to remember for sure. Now we can release the seats here and here. Well, we can go around or if we have long enough arms like I do, we can also do it like this. I never did that with any sedan yet, I think. So, <laughs> new ways here. And that is one meters 80 to the front seat. Of course, it depends on where the front seat is. It could, you could still move it a little bit more forward. Then if you put it in the middle part or you just use the ski hatch, that's also possible. Then of course you have two meters and a little bit more towards the shifting lever. Last but not least, this short sedan trunk should not have any problems with child safety here. Yeah, so that's a sensitive torque being applied. And you can see, isn't it a little bit decadent to have electric tailgate for such a small trunk lip? I think many would also do. Um, I haven't checked the price list for that, but I suppose even that is an option. I've just read an imaginary comment saying, Thomas, could you please put something like a backpack or something in the trunk so you can again see the dimension a little bit better. Also put it sideways also with the height. It's almost the size also of a cabin trolley. So also height wise that works pretty well here. So one of the improvements definitely here with the new generation. Welcome. Let's start with an acceleration. That was 100 kilometers an hour. I think. Pretty good. So the official figure is 5.8 seconds. I cannot check it at the moment. But maybe you guys check it down in the time code. Was it 5.8 seconds? It's easy to remember for this engine because it has 258 horsepower. 258, 5.8. It's really nice. This is the 2 liter 4 cylinder engine with the 330i here. We are driving. And see that there was no special launch control function, but even just by hammering the brake pedal and then the um, exhaust one, you could rev it up, pre-rev it to 3000 RPM. Um, you maybe heard that there was some uh, wheel slip since it's a rear wheel driven only, but that's, you know, that's what the 3 series is. Why people also go for it. Different driving modes. At the moment we're in the sport mode, or let's see, sport plus, then the stability control is drawn back just a little bit. And we had about 90 kilometers an hour, so almost 60 miles an hour, and 
car staying really silent, more to motorway silence a little bit later. And this one here, the minus 10 millimeter M sports suspension. But this one here and also the base one has this new hydraulic damper, which um, adds some progression to the dampening rate. So that shall bring you dynamic and comfort at the same time. And as long as the roads are pretty even, it feels very well. But when you go into some bumps, then you definitely feel that this is rather a sporty setup here. Oh, white kitten. There's a kitty. So, go slowly here a little bit. Don't run over some kittens. And then we get out of this small village again and go a little bit faster again. Good that we also can test some speed bumps. That's always pretty helpful for the suspension. Since when we go into... Um, um, Oh, that's not speed bumps, it's just, just weird roads. <laughs> but also good to test. So with this fixed suspension here, when we go through different driving modes, it's just changing how the automatic gearbox is changing. That when in sport mode, it turns up the RPMs, shifts up later and so on. But it does not change the suspension rate. That's different with the adaptive suspension we're going to test later on the racer with the 340i prototype. Then you can also change the dampening rate by yourself. But here there's one fixed rate and that's basically it. That's what I mean <laughs> with the sport setup of the suspension. We have the M steering wheel here and I would have expected it to be a little bit stiffer, especially in the sport mode. So there's hardly any resistance and you know, so far the BMW steering fields were very, very natural. I have the feeling that, I mean, it's good to steer definitely and easy to steer, but obviously they said, you know, let's make it easier for the customer when parking in and out and stuff, and mm, make it less stiff as for the, let's say, true sports customers. And I can somewhat understand it because most customers won't be hardcore sports enthusiasts. But then again, from an M steering in the 3 series, I would also expect it to be a little bit more natural. I'm not sure if you can really see it on camera, but here, you know, there's, there's like no effort at all. It's like, you can do it like this. Don't do that at home, kids. Um, so it's really more like, um, yeah, like, like, like in the Alfa Romeo. Let's, all, let's also test that one later at the motorway if it's the same. But here already, I have a good feeling for the car definitely. It feels very sporty, but it more feels like an uh, Akari computer game than, it's arcade, you say arcade, right? <laughs> so um, arcade, uh, then rather in this natural BMW steering feel that we used to. So again, if it's good or bad, you have to decide on your own. Mm, you can very precisely steer the car, definitely. But it feels a little bit more artificial than before. The engine here is silent when you want to have it silent and when you need it, but at the same time, you have a good punch when you really want to have it. <laughs> now you feel that the world was a... Um, yeah, I mean, this progression, does lead to that, that as, you know, when you are at some minor bumps, it stays soft, and when it's getting rougher, it also gets gets harder. That's a good idea, definitely. Um, but again, with the lower setup, it can get a little bit too rough at times. But as long as the roads are good, it's of course a little bit more fun to do it in that way. So this would be the situation, you know, when we want to maybe go to the sport more that you don't have to shift back or something and you have a little bit better um, reaction, for example. That one, yeah, the next straight. Wow, that one is really smelling bad. That's a 1.9 TDI, an old Audi ET. That one was, well, that smells really bad. Not really that take. Hmm, nice, it was even uphill, and now we have also some great roads. You can always use the shifting pedals here. Go back a gear, or then up again. And 
if you want to go to the automatic again then hold the right pedal just a couple of seconds and here we are wow what nice corners here and that's a lot of fun and the thing is here with the 3 series it's a mid-size sedan but at the same time it's always somehow a sports car and even if we're just you know, in the normal comfort mode it doesn't feel uh, less sporty the engine is still reacting very well to the throttle input and stuff steering again is very precise and definitely fun but again I'm a little bit disappointed that um, I think they had a good unique selling point with making it very natural and old school the steering feeling whereas other manufacturers make it more artificial and easy to steer I think it was really BMW's unique selling point yeah that's about it um, I wonder if that's any different in the 340i later on on the racetrack really looking forward to that and so you should also stay tuned to this review in the full length to see how that one plays out nevertheless it's a lot of fun to steer this vehicle still also with the stiff suspension set up here that's of course where it's um, performing very well now the brakes whoa those are good hmm that was a very harmonious but yet precise braking I like that I mean it's even more important that the car brakes very well than um, then accelerates that's you know even more important aspect of it for sure so now a little bit calm again and yeah I mean when we would have the adaptive suspension now we could for example have it softer now for the city and then stiffer again for you know some some more fun winding roads but here again with the fixed dampening setting so here in the city by the way the soft suspension is of course that you know that it feels very well and it's easy to steer and also when you, you know want to find a parking spot and so on but for sporty driving would have expected a little bit something different I think this sounded also for a two liter four cylinder quite nice or what do you guys think so of course everything is very well dampened and so star and, and, and so on but you still have a nice sound mm usually nowadays also the engine sounds are artificially enhanced by by some extent you know that's just the way it is that's I mean even Lexus does that in the V8 engines because they are also well insulated from the cabin <laughs> that you need some sound of that basically record it and then play, play it back again wow what a great view here and a nice road here we can go a little bit faster again we go to the sport mode once again lower gear is being selected the steering is not really stiffer oh, come on now I, I really want to know it let's go configure individual the steering is sport okay. steering comfort steering sport yeah okay yeah it gives a little bit more resistance but again here in this middle area hmm. I think I'm gonna give the engineers a little bit feedback about that that they maybe adapt something of it or maybe when we drive the 340i later maybe that is the great setup they want let's see about that later let's first have some fun more here on the roads yeah I mean that's still the strength of the 3 series it is so much fun to drive this vehicle so in this mid-size segment they all have somehow their unique features mm. But this one here is still among those which are just the most fun to drive especially as this car gives you such a balanced feeling so I'm for example feeling that they have even improved the weight balance that you really get the 50 50 wow. front axle rear axle so that is something also it was fun to drive before yes definitely but this balanced feeling is something they've improved here in this new generation the car feels so flawless in driving then so when I follow this line here and maybe on camera it looks even maybe a little bit boring or something but I mean we are going the maximum speed that is allowed here which is astonishing that uh, those speeds are allowed here um, on those winding corners that's you know on, on the US American road that would be like 25 miles 
limit here and this is like 55 miles limit here um, not now at, at this stage here but but before so um, very interesting as for that great it's really a lot of fun but when you move this car a little sportier yeah those sportier seats they somehow keep you tight but with the animal skin surface the surface is very stiff and I feel that now that when you're going a little bit sportier right and left mm, then you know you know those parts where your bones are basically the closest um, to your outer body um, you feel it's getting, getting a little bit uncomfortable then for that so I really prefer that the seats are you know in the in the upper areas are a little bit soft and then they can be a little bit you know stiffer underneath but the first part should be softer that it adapts a little bit to the bodies and the bones and that's really hard to do in general with a stiff animal skin surface because it does not really adapt um, because it's you know like a, like a plastic for somehow to, somehow you know with the artificial um, um, you know, chemicals and stuff they, they put on that as well so now last time we go a little bit sporty before we go a little bit calmer and I can just continue doing that for hours and I think that's still what this very vehicle is about that is just driving fun when you're you know, on your way to work or um, just go out on the weekends or whatever that you don't need a separate sports car or something and somehow I feel more safe and just better somehow driving a normal vehicle but still be able to do it in a sporty way because I can do a lot of other things with this car still and you have a let's say a very balanced feeling and not that aggressive as in a pure very low sitting sports car um, but at the same time you don't miss any sportiness and I think that's something they have again achieved here with the new 3 series with a new inline six cylinder in the M340i. We're gonna warm up a little bit and then we have some hot laps. Of course you already heard the sound difference so this six cylinder of course gives you way more sound than than the four cylinder. This is one of the biggest differences. Let me first introduce you something about the technology. Well this one here is, has the rear differential lock. So um, Oh, there's the first group coming, they are already on their hot lap, so we let them pass. So there's a rear sports differential that comes standard with a 340i. And what does it do? When I'm here now in the corner, it shifts torque from the curve inner wheel to the curve outer wheel. And that really puts the car into the corner and improves the handling. And also been talking here to the racing drivers and they also say what I said in my driving part that the car feels more balanced more neutral so to say but neutral not in a bad but in a very positive way that it's actually better to control here the 340i we're driving it in the version with the all-wheel drive which will be standard for the European market that of course helps us when accelerating out the corners because we have just more traction then to bring the power to the ground so the all-wheel drive will of course be faster I'm in the Sport Plus mode that reduces the electronic stability control that means I also still have a rear wheel bias with the all-wheel drive and reducing the stability control also gives me slum, some play with the rear end so it's not that the car gets out of control it's dry and a good tarmac here anyway but there's a little bit more play than with the rear end so you feel that you're still 
drive a primarily rear-wheel based car, 200 kilometers an hour now, or 125 miles an hour. It's not so loud in here for that, considering, right? So also proves the sound insulation, although those ones in here are prototype vehicles still with the M340i. Therefore, those racery cars also still have the Carmo paint that we already showed you it on the motor show, how it looks like unveiled. Here, a look at the steering, and here on the race track, I'm a little more satisfied with the steering. It seems that the 340i has a different steering setup here, so it's not that loose. It seems to me that it's a little bit better to control to me. So now we overtake, either because we're fast or they're on the cooldown lap. I'm not quite sure about that. So we go on our inside, so it's really precise to control, but still I would have liked that it's a little bit more progressive, so um, that I don't have to cross my arms so much then when there is a hairpin corner, that would be better. So we turn in here now, but indeed this neutral handling, this very balanced feeling, that's what they've done here with the new generation. So it is a mid-size sedan, but already this one here, the 340i, is a true sports car, really. Not so getting drifted out to the side, very well to control. It feels even a little bit smaller than it is, although it has gain in length. And the performance here from the M340i, you can really compare those driving uh, stuff to past true M models. So I would be really interested, maybe when the professional race driver drives this one here, the M performance model, here, you know, see it drifting a little bit out with the rear end. So for comparing this actual performance model, M performance model with the true M of, let's say maybe a past generation or the generation before that. Of course there's more horsepower, but here with the all-wheel drive, you can also so well dis distribute it as well. And all of the fine tuning they have done, which I talked about also earlier in the exterior part. again. Seems the instructor is also limiting it to that speed. I mean that's okay. We could easily go a little bit faster here. It would be, would be possible. The M performance model also comes with bigger brake discs. I also feel that still have great great braking performance here even if we are at higher speeds. Turning in hard. Yeah I would like to see a little bit less here maybe. And the thing is why, why, why I'm also more satisfied with the steering here, well, on the race trick, either you're on a straight here and then you just keep it straight, the steering wheel, or you are with a lot of speed in the corners. And then when I'm in the corner, the steering wheel is actually quite okay. So what we can also do is go to the dynamic traction control. That leaves me even a little bit more now room to play around, so we'll probably soon now hear and feel how that works, tell you more about it. Performance from this engine is, I mean, there's no single horsepower lacking right here. I mean, it is almost already 400 horsepower, so you do not have to spend the extra price to get the true M model, I guess. And this one here will be also a little bit more um, capable for, uh, for everyday driving, like the true nail more than the true M model. Also we have the adaptive suspension here, which is to me, I mean, it's a race track now, I cannot compare that well to the normal road driving, but it feels to me that it is a better compromise between the sporty driving and the comfort actually. Here now it's, I think now as I've turned the ESC control a little bit back, you maybe also hear and feel on camera that I'm working a little bit more with the vehicle. For sure a great fun ride. One of the deals I want to mention is that in the lower leg area um, they haven't used so many soft materials so if you use this car for race driving you would need some third-party parts to make 
brake that a little bit softer, otherwise you'll get uh, some bruises on your legs when you're on the racetrack and your legs are you know, thrown all over the place, for example. So I would recommend that. So, uh, of course this car is not, you know, <laughs> primarily intended for the racetrack, but we are surely showing that it can easily master it, even just from the normal stocks version. Got the M Sports exhaust with that package, of course. Usually also the normal suspension with the M lowering. And then optional the one we have here, the adaptive suspension, which is then signalizing a wider span between comfort and the sporty experience. So again, some more corners for you here to enjoy. Hard on the brakes, tire squeaking, accelerating out now. Rear comes a little bit. But still with this all-wheel drive, very well to control. You still remain with the rear wheel bias, definitely feel that. And due to the limited slip differential, usually the all-wheel drive cars would be under steering just a little and due to this differential, the sports differential they've added, they limit this effect that the all-wheel drive car would be under steering. Again, a little more talk to the outer wheel that pushes and pulls me out of the corner a little bit more. Also good to have the head-up display here now on the racetrack. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't have to watch any speed controls, but um, so if I want to just know what the speed is by interest, I don't have to look down to the instruments. I just can have my view in the head-up display. I mean, when I'm here on the racetrack and just close my eyes for one second, I'm like 50 meters more ahead. So always watch out. So the head-up display can also add more safety. steady here in the corner and then bam. So what do you guys think here of our racetrack experience with the M340i? a full no comment lap also for you if you guys wanted to see that hope you enjoyed that as well
now to some city driving and autobahn driving. So, well, it's not autobahn in Portugal, but it's motorway. <laughs> autobahn is reserved for German, for Germany. So, since we have those new dampers here with the hydraulic progression, but here the minus 10 millimeter sport suspension, the question is, does it still do well in everyday driving? And for example, here there's just you know some just some stripes on the roads, and when you go through some potholes, you feel it's definitely a lower and a little bit stiffer suspension, and you cannot change that one. So that's the the downside of that. This one here also the standard one that comes with a 340i as standard, and well, it makes makes it hard for me to really say, oh, with this new suspension technology have they also improved the comfort because this one is already then the sportier setup um, yeah so the thing is then if you want the most comfort then you would not go with this one and if you want it sportier but at the same time if you want to be able to switch it a little bit then you would go for the optional adaptive sport suspension so um, it's still somewhat fine and it's not too stiff so it's not like you would say you cannot get along in everyday driving but I feel that um, you get more disadvantage than advantage um, because a base setup of a 3 series is usually already sporty that you can enjoy driving and if you want the most flexibility and want to spend a little bit more money then you would go for the adaptive one so my advice would be to either stick with the base suspension and save the money and go for the most comfort or then if you seek a sportier one then go for the adaptive one that you are still able to choose that in time you want to go sporty go for the sporty one and for the sporty setup and when you want to drive more comfortably stick with the comfort setting so here again it's still okay to drive as long as the road is even but if there are some potholes then you feel the disadvantage of it of course the car sits sportier somehow so if you want that sporty stiff experience then that would be the suspension to go for um, I think most of the people will be fine then again with the base suspension or if they want to go all max out go for the adaptive one so when I drive very slowly the minimum consumption we could score so far, and that's quite good, is 6 liters and 1 kilometers, that's 39 mpg. But that's just if you know, roll and cruise control and so on. So that's the minimum consumption you'll get. More realistic are for sure when you have some more city driving, more acceleration, more power on the motorway and so on. When you go up to, you know, 7 plus, around 8 liters, which would be then 33 mpg. Or, um, I think we go here. or um, even a little bit lower, you know, in in the 20 high something figures in the in the MPG. That's more realistic value. But of course, we'll take a look how it evolves here on the motorway. So what they've changed um, in comparison to the previous generation is also the one thing I feel most with this vehicle is the noise insulation. And so now we're heading up to 90 kilometers an hour, which is almost 60 miles an hour and it's really super silent in here it wasn't bad in the previous generation but that's something they've massively improved and as I told you earlier the front insulation is standard for the front windscreen and then optionally you can also get an insulation package for the side windows and that's also what we have here in this vehicle since they put the cars also well, most of the time really full spec and it's really become pretty silent the tarmac here is not super sleek so it's a little bit rough not the roughest not like on Mallorca but still the car remains relatively silent so that's one thing that's really cool also how it runs straight the car overall feels calmer and a little bit more confident even for but maybe you can also see it on suspension again that with um, with the M 10 millimeters lower suspension here you know, we got like this not sure if you can see that on camera but you can definitely feel that or some also hear that 
and the new engine setup they found here, 258 horsepower with a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine. Also super silent, you can hardly hear anything from that engine when you have it in the comfort mode or even in the Eco Pro mode where the throttle input is reduced a little bit and it's also tuned on the lower consumption. Here now for example in the roundabout always take a look at how much do I have to steer in which corner and they don't have the most progressive setup, a little bit more progressive than Mercedes so with Mercedes you usually have to steer the most then with BMW it's a little bit in between and with the Volkswagen AG models like Audi and direct com competitor you have to steer less, it's more progressive you know the, the more you steer the more the wheels turn in it's more like one to one from the corner angle to the steering wheel angle and um, I think that's pretty cool but here they still have a good setup mm, the M steering wheel here of course to, to this um, uh, asynchronous form it's a little bit weird somehow, you know, it is sporty, yes, of course, but somehow I prefer the base steering wheels here in the, in the BMW. Here, by the way, interesting, the right and the left tarmac is different, so it gives, it gives a different feeling when you go on the left lane than on the right, right, right lane. Funnily, although this one looks newer and darker, this one here is rougher. I mean, you probably also hear that on, on camera. So let's also test out some of those assistance systems. Um, there's an adaptive cruise control built in here, that's an option. The autonomous emergency brake is standard equipment, that's good. We also have a blind spot monitor, but luckily there's, well, there's one van behind us. Maybe we can make him overtake us, and then we can see the blind spot monitor as well. So here, by the way, there's also this active steering assistant. It's not an autonomous driving feature. That was the beeper for the um, for the motorway fee. Ah, so now the van is speeding a little bit. Now we should see the triangle there in the side mirror. There it is, the yellow triangle. And that's the blind spot. When I said the turning indicator, it also starts flashing. So about this semi-autonomous ride. You should keep your hands at the steering wheel at all times But when you have this highest build of this system here It shows you a green steering wheel when the car is basically taking over a little bit on its own So again keep your hands at the steering wheel But just to show you here in this case the car holds itself in the middle position of the lane um, and Also when we're going in the next corner I can show you that again And also when I for example yeah, steer. You can see that when I steer to the right myself, that's my monitor, hard to see now in the light. So, Rio Arada here, close to Faro for our location mark. So, here when I steer to the right, see here the car slightly corrected to the left. And finally, we always find some differences between those active steering systems, which is working very flawlessly with BMW. And the thing is when it's deactivated, so when I hit the brake, I deactivate it. And when I then run to the side of the lane, and that was sometimes, for example, with the X5, very aggressive. Let's see how that one plays out. Hmm, that was okay. So, so I did not counter steer. So again, I, I, I won't steer to the left. See, that was all the, all the vehicle. That was me now. <laughs> so, but um, it's not, you know, it's not that you would be frightened or something. And the X5 was tuned to a way that it was like super overreacting, you know. But here, obviously, they found a good setup for it. Also, I found this counter steering a little bit better for the driver than the uh, system that Mercedes is using with the um, brake intervention because. That is super, the super harsh reaction when you do it with the brakes, you know, when you brake the left side of the vehicle that you go in the lane again then, or the right side then if you go off to the other side, then suddenly you're like, whoa, we are shocked. But here is smooth counter steering to keep the car in lane. I think that's definitely the right choice to go to. So again here, rough tarmac. So it is um, loud from the overall target from the lower ground, but from the higher wind installation you hear that it's actually quite well done 
So it's again, when I go off to the left side here now, then you immediately hear that it's more silent. So overall again, good job with the new sound insulation here. Also with the you know, weight distribution, the car overall feels very well balanced. It is still a very good motorway car and you don't feel that you would need a segment above that to say like, oh, I can just have a great motorway ride only if I go to the 5 Series. Because in the front you also have good comfort. Those sport seats here so far also make a good impression just while having a normal run. So it's also no problem. And consumption wise, I'm positively surprised. Because, I mean, this cruise control motorway, but 120 kilometers an hour, that's already something as for speed. Not always, so we're going up and down and stuff. And we're still keeping it below 7 liters on 100 kilometers. That's then the 33 mpg. So again, that's just you now without any big acceleration and, and so on. But I think the important info is you can keep it that low if you want to. So again, I think considering it's a mid-size segment, that's an acceptable consumption indeed. We will also see later on how that plays out then for the three liter engine. Not today because we don't only have it on the racetrack, but in later reviews we'll also try to compare them like with the four cylinder and six cylinder, how that one plays out as for the consumption. So, new noise insulation. The assistance systems work pretty flawlessly. Of course, there's the automatic keeping in distance to the car in front of you which we don't have here, luckily, today. Such an empty motorway, right? So, at that time of the year, around Faro, southern Portugal, there's nothing here, you know? So, no, not so many visitors. But, of course, good for us to be able to test the cars with a um, little bit more open roads. There's no racing motorway here, as you only have that in Germany, where you have unlimited speed. Um, but I think it's still very good to experience. Now oh, no, the right lane is, is the same tarmac again. Yeah, so very smooth also the, the lane changes. You can also deactivate it just on and every time you hit the steering wheel, that's also possible. And look at how stable the car remains when you just do lane changes at 120. That's so effortless. And you can see the steering wheel here when you go faster. Sometimes, I mean, it should be the case that the steering wheel gets less sensitive at higher speeds, but here I have somehow the feeling it's very sensitive when you're at higher speeds. It almost feels like the setup they found in the Alfa Giulia. You know, look at that lane chain and how little I do with the steering wheel. It's interesting. By the way, you know, I'm not drunk and there's no one behind me for a long time distance, so that's okay to do that. And also when you go some, you know, Slide slalom here at 120 kilometers an hour. You have a very good feeling for the car. However, here, um, I'm not sure if that also has something to do with assistance systems or something. Um, here, the very like minus three to plus three de degrees. This one here feels a little bit unnatural to me, somehow. Um, I also had that in the recent Mercedes models. So we are always, that's again the beeper for the, um, you know, for motorway taxation here. <laughs> so I wonder, especially here with the M steering, why this, you know, this area here is somehow a little bit loose in feeling. But it changes a little bit as there's more that you steer, but definitely I feel that this steering setup here is more pleasing at some lower speeds than it would be at autobahn speeds. Maybe they have also done it in a way that you, when you're cruising here just on the motorway, that you maybe remain a little bit more calm or something as for as for the steering. I don't know. But of course, we always try to give you as much feeling for the vehicle as possible. So, definitely still a good motorway one, for sure. Also, with the new generation, a little bit more refined, good engine values, power, consumption and so on. Maybe um, let me just get off the motorway for you again because it's sometimes you know a little bit exciting. Then you have some higher speeds, get off in a nice corner or something. That's always good to see as well. Direction of the famous Auto Doromo. Here again, the car is 
hardly tilting at all. Right. Yeah, oh, here I think. Uh, well, I think it doesn't doesn't matter if I go left, straight or right now, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Maybe you see it on camera. As soon as I go into some some bump or so, let me drive in there. Bam. It's still okay, you know. You can you can definitely live with a sport suspension. Um, I always tend to say, no suspension is, you know, from the different setups is necessarily super bad or super good. It really always depends on what you want from the car. So, but that's good that when we can give you the report then which suspension you might go for, depending on on what you really want. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new BMW 3 Series. Today, also here as a final conclusion with a different vehicle, just to show you another color. It really will rise from orange to red, depending on the light situation. It's very interesting. And also, this is not the M Sport line. So if you rather want this traditional luxury styling with a lot of chrome and not so fancy big bumpers and stuff, that would be also 19 inch rims here by the way you can see well exterior wise it's surely rather an evolution so they haven't changed that much just you know, some little tweaks here and there interesting point for me is definitely that it's a little bit wider than before and a little bit longer so you also have some more room on the interior although it hasn't really changed the segment or something but the legroom in the rear passenger side that one is really important so you can very well use that now also for tall adults in the rear that would be one of the most important things for me then for the overall practicability use of that vehicle well underneath they've changed a lot and there was so many things i could tell you about this vehicle and that really showed that they you know paid attention to this detail this 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 and so changed also a lot of technology de details you cannot see at first glance that also contributes then later to the driving experience but let me first finish the interior because there the build quality has been increased some things that were missing in some of the predecessor generation there was no rattling or anything we could possibly hear also the digitalization of the whole cockpit one key finding for sure that the um, the voice assistant it really depends on your internet connection it works super well when you have a good connection when you have some less uh, connection then you know that doesn't work so fast and so you have to pay that um, pay, that, uh, pay, pay attention to that but it's the same also with the new assistance for example with the mercedes mbux as long as you have good signal it's great less signal it only has the basic functions but i think everywhere everything is rather very well oriented so sorted out in the interior so it's rather a conservative approach the whole car is rather a conservative approach making the existing things all a little bit better and the same also counts for the driving experience because so far it was already a sporty car and fun to drive now it's even more balanced out it has a more neutral feeling but in a positive way because you feel very safe you feel very much at home it's a little bit more agile the new suspension i would really looking forward to just test the base suspension at some point the adaptive suspension was really performing very well on the racetrack the normal suspension with the m setup with the lower one i found that too stiff on driving situations just on a normal street if you really appreciate it you can go for it otherwise i would rather tend to say go for the base suspension or then again full spec for the adaptive suspension same goes for the seats i would either go with um, the base seats they will offer you a little bit more room uh, overall with the day those sport seats um, also after some race track driving i found them a little bit too stiff and they caused me a little bit lower back pain so i would also go with the base seats there it's also a trick you know when ordering this car it can get so expensive when you get a lot of options for that so i would rather really pay attention which options do you really need because also the base car will be absolutely fine to drive the steering feel is something i am least satisfied with because especially the play in the lower angle areas and it's just an artificial feel you have good control and yes you have precise steering but it doesn't give you a very natural driving experience as for the steering still overall it's a lot of fun to drive and it was really impressive both on road 
and on the racetrack how fast you can actually go with a normal mid-size sedan. You can go as fast as a true sports car. Also looking then here to the M340i, which was a very impressive experience. The all-wheel drive gave you a lot of control and traction on the ground then. The engine, of course, also with a, a flawless performance. And speaking about the four-cylinder engine, even if you want, with a quite decent consumption here for the petrol engine. Yeah, so many things we covered in the, um, this review here. I think we could give you a very balanced review of this car. What's you know really great about this vehicle, where they can still do some work. I hope you enjoyed this extensive tour here with us. Please give us some feedback and also tell us what you think about the Onio 3 series. Which one would you go for? Which version? Which color? And also tune in next time to Autogefühl.